What's up, you guys? Steven here from Off the Shelf Movie Nights to talk to you about physical media, about Blu-rays and 4Ks and all the things that we love to collect, the way we like to own our movies and not rent them in perpetuity. I know I say it every week, but it just means a lot. Physical media means a lot for the real movie fan. And that is why today I'm going to talk to you about something different. I'm not going to just be talking about some physical media piece that I bought or, or whatever. Uh, there will be a lot of that coming. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming that I can't wait to share with you and talk about and, and uh, all that stuff. But today I'm talking about the sort of, I guess, the three prongs of the spork of media that I love. The first one being uh, theaters, cinema. The next one being streaming. And the third one being physical media. Not necessarily in that order, of course. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a long time because there's another YouTube channel. I'm not going to call it out right now. Um, but I love the channel. I love their sort of conversational discussion of physical media and uh, their love of it, of course. But they also are pretty negative on theaters. There's almost, um, I guess, a giddiness to seeing them not, uh, maybe not surviving or or not being available and having movies going right to streaming right now because this person uh, prefers to watch it at home and wants it now. He doesn't want to have to wait uh, whatever the window is, whether it's three weeks, four weeks, a month, two months, whatever the window is. He doesn't want to wait. He thinks he should have it day and date that the movie is complete um, on streaming and then, you know, be able to buy the physical disc. I have some issues with that. Um, for a, a number of reasons, and I'm going to talk to you about that right now. And I'm going to talk to you about how I think if the theaters weren't not to survive uh, COVID, how I believe it will impact the other thing we love, which is physical media. I think it's being very short-sighted. So, I want to talk about what uh, the theatrical experience means to movies, to cinema. You know, and do a little bit of comparison for you. So, uh, the cinematic experience is... M Sorry about that. I forgot to mute my phone. Hang on. So let's get into it. Let's get into the cinematic experience versus what we have now and how you haven't, I believe, you haven't, we haven't seen the real impact of uh, a loss of the theatrical experience. We haven't seen that impact yet. So... The cinematic experience, the, the film experience, and I'm not talking about going to the theater and all of that stuff. I love all that stuff. A lot of you guys uh, hate it, and that's fine. But what I'm talking about when I say cinematic experience is the uh, uh, sort of method in which films are made versus the way they're made for streaming. So there's a flat way flat method of shooting TV that is also very apparent in a lot of, most of, if not all of, the streaming projects that I've watched. There's some, there's some, you know, there's some out there that buck that rule a little bit, but not much. And by flat method, I mean, um, it's very expensive to move a camera. You've got to imagine, and, and I experienced this on, on some level with my own film projects, when you're shooting a scene, you have an entire you have the, the scene happening here, then you have the camera here, and then you have a whole crew behind you, lights, you know, electric, um, just a whole crew of people, you know, ads. You've got the camera crew, you know, it's usually more than you know many more than one person, all behind the camera. So you shoot your scene. Now, when you move that camera to get the same scene again from a different angle to offer depth um, and to to further impact the drama of the scene. When you make that camera move, everything behind the camera has to move. The sight, the, the scene has to be relit. Sound uh, has to be reset. All of that stuff. It's a very expensive thing to do. This is why with sitcoms. Back in the you know early days of sitcoms, you've probably seen this if you're watching WandaVision a little bit. They would do a three-camera shoot where they would set up three cameras in three angles and get the take one time. You know, But when you look at that, the lighting is very flat. They do that so that it's somewhat consistent from each camera. 
Camera angles are very limited because you can't shoot across each other, obviously, because you'd see the camera. Um, so it gives you a sort of flat appearance. It does save a lot of money. Which is my big argument, the cinematic look. I've got two, a few examples here. You know, let's talk about this, this one. Let's talk about the Bad Boys films right here. This is the 4K Steelbook. Um, now, Michael Bay is not exactly the, you know, auteur, you know. A lot of his films are bad. But the example that, that he sets in the way the camera can be moved cinematically is huge. You know, in, in a streaming project, you might see a shot of a car. Well, in a Michael Bay project, he's shooting for film. He's shooting, well, not necessarily film, like classic film, but shooting for the cinema. He has a budget and time that allows him to not just shoot that car, but to start the camera on one side of the car and move it all the way around the car. You know, shoot that thing lovingly. And that's what I've always thought is, is his, his movies are like car porn and military porn because he shoots all of that stuff very lovingly. Um, he can wait till magic hour to shoot it. Whereas a streaming project would just shoot the, shoot the car, you know? And, and it seems like a very small thing. But one looks like TV, which is fine, and one looks like a movie, which is very different, okay? Budgets are smaller for streaming projects because when you're trying to make money, HBO Max, what they're trying to do right now with putting their stuff out, they're trying to, to make, you know, they're trying to get subscribers. That doesn't equate to ticket sales. Now, it's a very long game. You know, if they can hold those subscribers, and eventually they'll make that money. But there's not a streaming project out there that's gonna come out and make a billion dollars. There are movies that will in the cinema. So they can afford to spend some money to take the time to move that crew in such a way that they can spin that camera around. Now you'll see it falsely done on streaming and it looks very bad and my biggest example is The Irishman. Martin Scorsese is an amazing director but if you look at the Irishman, there's one tracking shot. Scorsese is known for long tracking shots. But that tracking shot is so flat and so riddled with video artifacts and it looks very CG at times. It's, it's ham-fisted and done as best they could with the money they had. And he had a lot of money, but he also had to pay a lot of people. And he had to spend a lot of money on CG to make them look younger. That movie it doesn't look like a Martin Scorsese film. It just doesn't. It looks like a Martin Scorsese TV show. In contrast, let's take a look at a movie like Halloween. This, this is the standard uh, Blu-ray because I pulled it from the box set over there. Um, I do have the 4K also, before you ask. So Halloween, in a lot of ways, is the movie that made me want to make movies. And this happened um, many, many years ago the first time I saw the movie in the theater. It was at an art house. I've seen it many times in an art house, but every time it plays in a theater, I go see it if I can. But the first time I saw it, I truly understood what a steady cam shot means. There is one shot in this movie that made me say, I want to do that. And it's a simple shot that most people that aren't filmmakers or maybe hardcore film fans overlook. And it is a shot of Lori and her friends walking up a sidewalk. You know, there's some really great tension that happens in that shot later, but the shot that I like is the, the steady cam shot of them coming up the sidewalk. Um, it was the first use, I believe, if I'm remembering it correctly, the first use of the modern style of steady cam. And that shot, and that shot actually taught me the difference between TV and movies. What, I had seen the movie on TV plenty of times before, and I had seen that shot and didn't think anything of it. But in the theater, on this huge screen, you see this beautiful shot of these girls moving up a sidewalk. And it does in the cinema, when they move across the side, the, the, this giant screen, it does what it's supposed to. It makes them feel small and vulnerable. That's the point of that shot before we get the first Michael Myers sort of teaser. It doesn't work on TV. It's a throwaway shot. It's a transitional shot. They're doing uh, small talk during it. 
but in the cinema, that shot works. That's why, if you're a real movie fan, you've got to understand what the difference is. Now we're going to talk about somebody who has used CGI, but uses it, you know, cinematically. And that is Christopher Nolan. This is a, an awesome collection, by the way, if you don't have it. The full collection is, uh, full box is here, because it has the Blu-rays too. Um, Nolan has used a ton of CGI in his film, but he sh he's a, had the money, cinematic, you know, in a cinematic setting, to build sets. I compare anything that Nolan's done to what we see with The Mandalorian, which is probably the most stylized sh show, other than maybe WandaVision, that's on streaming right now. And The Mandalorian is shot with rear projection. They don't go out in the desert and shoot that thing. And sometimes you can, can't can tell. A lot of times you can tell. It's well done. It looks good. But you can tell. It's CG. It's, it's a projection background. You know, and they have it in such a way that he can walk across in front of it and there's some depth and whatever. But it's all uh, CG enhanced with something as simple as, you know, Batman walking down the street in Gotham City. It's shot in a real location. These are the reasons that... These are the things we would lose without theaters, in other words. You can look at what... You can look at an example right now. Look at the old guard. The old guard, it has Charlize Theron. She's great in it. But it feels flat. It feels low budget. It feels like a streaming project. Um, so, do I think streaming has its place? For sure. For sure it does. I love quick access to, old, to TV shows on streaming. You know, I own a lot of TV shows and physical media. You know, if it's something I really love, I want to own it for all the other reasons that we do. But if it's something I'm kind of curious about or whatever, you know, I love it. I, I, I do love being able to look at stuff on HBO on my sort of schedule. You know, the HBO originals. And if I like those things, I buy the physical media uh, versions of it because I want better quality. Because we all know that a show like Game of Thrones doesn't... The, the quality on physical doesn't compare to, you know, what, what's on streaming doesn't compare. Anyway, so yeah, and for, for portability, if you're traveling, I love streaming for that. You know, we all know why we love physical. It's because the quality is better. The, the AV is better. The bonus features are better. They don't tweak and change your film. Uh, your uh, your movie. Once you own it, it's your movie. They don't change it. You know, they just did a thing which I actually think is very nice that what they did um, on Disney Plus uh, with Black Panther. They changed the opening Marvel logo into a tribute for Chadwick Boseman, and I think that is a very great thing. But if you're a cinephile, a film historian, you want to see that movie the way it was originally made and presented, well, you can't now on streaming. It seems like a very small thing, and that one is. What they did with movies like Splash, for example, where they covered up this tiny little shot of her butt with some CG hair that looks terrible, that's just terrible. That's destructive. Um, uh, Toy Story and the blooper reel, they changed some of it because they, uh, some, a sequence in the blooper reel uh, because of sensitivity. Now, I, I agree that, you know, it, looking back in retrospect, that scene might be... Um, culturally insensitive, you know? But we, we can't learn from something if you erase it from existence. So, those are problems with it. Now, uh, I don't have to go too much more into why we love some, uh, physical media, because we know, but a couple things. Why I think... Uh, it should be obvious now why I think... Let's say we stopped having theaters. They died because of COVID, or we, they died because... You know, you or me or whatever got too lazy to go to the theater, or didn't want to spend the money or time or whatever. Well, we lose that cinematic experience, which is, can be translated pretty well in 4K. Pretty well. You know, a filmmaker like Christopher Nolan, for example, or Steven Spielberg, or, or you know, even, even Scorsese, they know how to use the screen to impact the story. There's no bringing that home unless you can have a theater at home. And I've done a room tour. I have a pretty good setup here. It's not the same. It's not the same. 
um, what we're getting on HBO Max now. Everyone is excited, saying, oh, look, you know, we're getting really high quality, awesome films on HBO Max. This is the way streaming is going to be. No, it's not. These films that we're getting, like Wonder Woman, which was a terrible movie, and I question its cinematic value because so much of it is not real. Um, but that, that's not the only... And superhero movies are kind of like that. It's a whole different monster, a whole different discussion. But anyway, we're getting that quality of film now because these films that we're seeing this year were supposed to go to theater. Moving forward, 2022 forward, when they start creating original content, as they have been, for HBO Max, it will not be that quality. There's just no way. Not unless we start paying 50 bucks a month for it. You know, Disney is trying to experiment with this, you know, charging an extra 20 or $30 for uh, a movie on top of your rental fee. That doesn't work for me either because in that month I would be spending 50 bucks basically. So I have not done it. I didn't do it for Mulan. I won't do it for the movie, the next one. I forgot the movie anyway. So the way that is destructive to physical media is we don't get the quality of movie that we were getting to own. You won't get it on Apple iTunes. You won't get it in streaming. You, you won't get it because they won't be making it anymore. You know? And hopefully that bothers some of you. You know? Some people just don't care. You know? It, 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 so much of what we watch and, you know, absorb is disposable nowadays. You know? I mean, I, I was doing my top 20 uh, from 2020, and I had a problem remembering everything I watched because it, it goes in and out. It's it's like cotton candy. It doesn't, it's not like a gourmet meal. You know, when you go to the theater and it's an experience, whether you liked it or hated it, it sticks with you because it was an experience. It wasn't just, you know, whatever I clicked on Netflix on a, you know, Thursday night. I mean, this seems like grumbling and maybe it kind of is, but I just see a, a few people who claim to be hardcore film people in, in our, like, the Bluetuber community that are hating on, on theaters and loving the fact that they're not going to, you know, they're maybe not being around. I think that cinemas will survive this. It might change, you know. It might. We may get fewer films in the theaters. I, I'm not sure. But to lose that, even if you don't want to participate in it because you were impatient, is to destroy your own experience. Because quality will go down. It just will. So what do you think? What is your thoughts on, on this? Are you all for it? You know, are you on that page? Do away with the theaters because who cares? Give us the movies day and date when they're done. Um, or, or do you see that what I'm trying the, the point I'm trying to make you? Do you have an appreciation for the cinematic experience? And do you see the difference in something like uh, Goodfellas and The Irishman? in the, the cinematic quality of the film. You know? There, there's a difference between, you know, spaghetti and meatballs at, um, at Fazoli's, if you have those fast food places up there, versus having it at a real sit-down Italian place. They're both spaghetti and meatballs, but one's going to be way better than the other. I'm not saying there's not good content. Don't get me wrong. Original content streaming, there is. But it's a different, a different beast. It's TV. And I don't see any avenue where it wouldn't be anything but that. Just because of the limitations of what the money that can be made. You know? Um, I don't see six funders throwing money in together to make a, a big budget blowout film. You know? That's going to just stream. They won't do it because they can't get their money back. You know? A lot of big films, if you pay attention, and I'm sure because you guys are, are educated film fans, there will be three or four or five, six sometimes, different logos that come up in front of a movie. It's because all of these companies have participated in getting that money, getting that movie made. No one's doing that for streaming because there's no value in it. So anyway, what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think. Um, let's talk about this. You know, I, I I'm not. You know, I'm not, not going to vilify you if you are, are pro, uh, you know, no theater situation. That's that's your opinion. This is my opinion. You know, we all love movies. We can talk about it. But uh, it's something that's been on my mind. Um, so I thought I would share it with you just sort of in my random thoughts. And 
let's see where the conversation goes. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, you like physical media, all that stuff, please give me a subscribe. If you like this video, like it and share it. That would be a great help. But most importantly, hit me in the comments. Let's talk about movies. Let's talk about physical media. Tell me if you've been picking up stuff. What have you bought lately? And uh, let's just uh, share the love for uh, our uh, movie collections. Until next we meet, pull something cool off the shelf. Share it with your friends and family and remind them why physical media is the best way to watch films and TV. I'll see you guys on the next one.